Joining me now to discuss what it is like on the ground in Libya today is David Swanson, journalist and author of the book, War is a Lie. Hi there, David. Thank you so much for joining me again. Now, in the run-up to the intervention in Libya, what was the case that the U.S. gave for getting involved in the conflict? Well, of course, there was not a big question put to the U.S. public or to the Congress as there was with the missiles into Syria, and you saw the result. There should have been on Libya. This was done outside of Congress. This was done with lies about a U.N. resolution that didn't authorize overthrowing the government. Uh, it was done with lies about a crisis and a humanitarian need to intervene. Uh, and the idea that it was an intervention was, of course, a lie because Western countries, including the U.S., had been arming the government of Libya right up until the point that they were arming and working with uh, the opponents of the government of Libya. Uh, and the idea, of course, was sold as a short-term intervention that would get rid of a bad government and then things would go well. Uh, and of course, that has not been the case. It's predictably not been the case. And it's not been the case with any such military intervention that I'm aware of through history. So what you are saying is, do you think that we learned from uh, we learned from Libya in order to act in Syria, or have we learned that lesson? Uh, I think it helped a little bit in combination with Iraq and Afghanistan and the drone wars and the incredible expenditures of the past decade on weaponry and and military adventures and the failing economy and the distrust and the lies uh, and things coming out like the U.S. working with foreign governments in Yemen and possibly Pakistan and now maybe Libya uh, on things that th those governments lie to their public about uh, and say it was just the U.S. whereas actually the local government uh, cooperated possibly in that uh, in that kidnapping. Um, I, I think that the level of distrust uh, has grown and perhaps people have learned a little bit of a lesson from Libya. So here we are on the two-year anniversary of the day that Libya was reportedly freed. What does a free Libya look like today? Well, it's worse off. This is the thing. I don't know that the that the oil companies and the bankers and the weapons makers think that they got a bad deal and they're worse off, but the people of Libya are worse off. And the only people who care about that fact uh, are people who really care about humanity, which is, of course, not by any means everybody who clamors for humanitarian wars. Uh, and so the U.S. media is lying now primarily uh, by avoiding the subject, by not talking about it. We're not hearing much about the hell that Libya has become and the violence that has overflowed uh, its borders uh, and, and the fact that the, the ordinary person in Libya tends to be less secure, less well off now than before. Uh, as with Iraq, uh, we aren't told about these predictable and consistent results uh, of these military adventures. Now, the phrase leading from behind was coined in response to President Obama's stance in Libya. So what does that mean? And is this kind of President Obama's foreign policy model for that region in general? Well, we now have U.S. troops supposedly completely gone from Libya. The CIA, of course, was there before the intervention and all the talk of no troops on the ground excluded mention of them and their use of diplomats in Benghazi as human shields and all of that uh, disaster. And, and now you, there's talk about NATO sending people in. Uh, and this, of course, is a preference uh, in Washington to have NATO do work rather than the United States. But the United States is the leader in NATO, uh, is still going to be calling the shots is still going to be involved uh, and when things blow up and get worse there will be every temptation for the U.S. to again use the only tool it thinks to turn to and that is violence. So a rose by any other name is still the U.S. military essentially but um, how is this unrest in Libya affecting the neighboring countries in the region? Well, you've seen violence overflow into Mali. Uh, you've seen arms shipped out to Syria and, uh, and fighters shipped out to Syria. Uh, and you've seen a, a lack of stability in Libya impacting all of the nations around it. Uh, and you compare that with Tunisia, which is not violence free and not perfect by any means, but engaged in largely nonviolent protests. Uh, this is the difference between between a country that overthrows a government largely nonviolently, albeit inspired by a suicide, uh, compared to where massive violence is used. You can't switch it off like a light switch. You can't switch the resentment off, uh, and it's going to be there for years. 
And it is very important on this two-year anniversary to really look at Libya as a country right now and also look at U.S. involvement of it to kind of understand what our impact is when we go and enter these countries, whether we put soldiers on the ground or not. David Swanson, journalist and author of War is a Lie, thank you so much. Thank you.